England absolutely walk over the USA into a semi-final spot. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Boundary Edge. What was all the fuss about? Um, so England qualified for the uh, semi-finals in the T20 World Cup. We may even finish top of the group, depending on how West Indies and South Africa go later. Um, regardless of what position we finish, I'm still not sure who we're going to play because well done Afghanistan in in putting Australia to the sword really last night. Um, really, really well played. Australia have got to get up for that India game or is Afghanistan going through to the semis? Okay, this game was played at the Kensington Oval in uh, Barbados. Joss Butler again won the toss and elected to bowl. These were your teams. Okay, so let's take a look at the USA team first. Monank Patel, the uh, the team captain, still injured. So Aaron Jones continues as captain and named an unchanged side. So Patel, Jasdeep Singh, Nizgad Patel and Shayan Jahangir all missing out once more. USA fans, was this your strongest eleven? If Monank came back into the, the team, would that make it any stronger? And England fans, I know hindsight is a great thing, but did you agree with the dropping Mark Wood and bringing Chris Jordan back into the side? Spoiler alert, it was a good choice. So Mark Wood, Tom Hartley, Ben Duckett and Will Jacks continue to miss out. Okay, just before I bring up the scorecard, just um, a, a pre-game thought, England knew what they had to do. Um, at the toss, they were saying, well, let's get the two points first and then worry about run rate, which I thought was a little bit, not negative, but come on, guys, you know you've got to absolutely smash the USA. You could have won but still gone out. You could have lost and gone home in embarrassment. And you could have won, thankfully you did, and um, you know finished in first or second. So let's just have a quick look at the uh, the card. Okay, so in such a what I would describe as a crushing defeat, you often expect many good performances from the team that won, and there were. Uh, I will call out three in particular, and not very many performances or, or good performances from the team that gets crushed, and there weren't. So you'll see here that England did win by 10 wickets. First innings, USA were putting to bat. They scraped 115 uh, Nitish got 30 runs off 24, and Anderson, the, the ex-Kiwi international, um, got 29 off 28. So those were the two call-outs for USA. Nobody really got anything else of, of, uh, of note. Um, the wickets were spread. You'll see Rashi 2 for 13 off 4, Curran 2 for 22, uh, sorry, 2 for 23 off 2, and Jordan 4 for 10 off 2.5. And I'll just touch on those uh, in a second again. Reese Topley also got one. Um, and um, who got the other one? Oh yeah, Liam Livingston managed to get one. And surprisingly, Joffrey Archie didn't uh, didn't take a wicket today. But just going back to the names on screen, Curran was expensive, but he got a couple of wickets, so he made the he made the um, the scorecard. Jordan four for ten off just two point five claimed sort of the immediate headlines, and of course that included a hat trick. He got nine ten Jack. Um, and he will be celebrated for that. He actually bowled really well and fielded really well. Took um, at least one good catch that I can think of. It might have even been two, or, or, or perhaps that was Brooke. Um, so, yeah, I actually had Chris Jordan down as my man of the match because I thought, uh, you know, the headlines, a hat trick, wow, especially at Barbados, where he's, 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 I think he grew up in Barbados. But then reality bit me again. And the Yorkshire bias kicked in again. And what an absolute... Another masterclass by Adil Rashid. 2 for 13 of 4. What what more can I say about the guy? In fact, I'm not. So he's my man of the match. Adil Rashid. Of course, then England came out to bat. They knew what they needed to do. Um, they already calculated that if they knocked these off in no more than 18 overs and four balls then they would automatically qualify as it turned out they knocked them off in 9.4 overs the the first two overs were were, were fairly quiet um I, I don't think they i'm not sure if they hit a boundary but but the two were certainly f uh, phil salt and joss bull again they're eyeing and then just salt played the played the second fiddle 
uh, allowed Butler to just to, to hit his shots, the shots that we're really familiar with, that reverse sweep and the the, um, the lofted drive over mid on and straight. Sol finished up with just over a runner ball, 25 for 21. Well done. Um, a different pace for him today, but Butler smashing 83 off 38, almost grabbed man of the match. But then again, reality bites. I pulled my socks up, took a hold of myself and thought, he should have hit that because the USA bowlers were terrible. You know, they were slinging fours wide down leg side. They, they were, they, they had no sort of um, threat at all. So well done, Joss Buller. I think he actually broke one or two of the solar panels on the on the Kensington Oval roof. Um, so yeah, um, ten wicket win off nine point four. Adil Rashid, the uh, the man of the match. If you feel any different to what I've just said, let me know in the comments. So let's just confirm what we already know and have a quick look at Group 2. Okay, as we can see here, England have qualified with two wins from their three games, finishing on four points and a really positive run rate. USA lose all three of their games and we'll wait to see who qualifies for the semi-finals with England, whether it be South Africa or West Indies, when they play later this evening. Or, I think it's, it's half past 12 UK time that they play. So well done, England. So with all that being said, we'll know who we're going to play in the semi-finals by the time I wake up in the morning. Um, I would just like to say one word on the USA. Performed really well in the group stage. Had some good performances in Super 8, but ultimately, clearly, um, the fourth best team. I think what they've got to do, for what it's worth, is just take all the positivity out of positivity out of this and take that into the next few years the next world cup we've got the olympics cricket is in the, the next olympics um so that will be good for them and we've got major league cricket which is only started over recent years i think only a couple of years ago maybe maybe last year but you know if the americans start to invest time effort and, and media space on a sport then it's going to grow and sky are obviously pushing baseball over in the uk they even did some crossovers with a couple of the, the England batsmen, the film going out and doing some, trying to hit some home runs. So there's, they're definitely putting some time and effort into growing cricket in the USA. So I think that is something to watch over the next few years. And I think we should um, we should expect big things from the USA. Okay, well, on reflection, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm glad we've got more, more games to come. You know, definitely one. hopefully two games. I kind of, I've got my fingers crossed for uh, Afghanistan. Um, in the other group and I quite I'd quite fancy playing them in the semis not because I think they're the weakest team but I just think it would be good for cricket and I'd be interested to see how, how both teams um, match up to each other um, so other than that that's me done for another one um, if you've enjoyed this sort of uh, updates and reactions please drop me a like on the video if you've got another few seconds please leave me a comment as well but as always if you love cricket as much as I do consider smashing that subscribe button of the ropes for six but as always stay healthy and i'll see you soon